Hi, it's Anne from the Useless Crafter. Thanks for joining today. This is gonna be a design space tutorial on how to do an off the mat project for a unicorn. So this one's a little bit tough. If you're wondering why I haven't done unicorns in the past, um, it's probably be because uh, there's a huge white space in the body and yeah, I had no interest in tackling it. <laughs> but this is a special request, so I wanna do it. And it's a special request from someone who's been following me for quite some time, so I definitely had to do it. Um, all right, so we're gonna make this 30 inches. Let's take a look um, and just kind of discuss it a little bit from a high level overview. Um, what is gonna be the issue is this bottom part right here in the white. It is all one white, one white piece it's white that's another issue is that even using white glitter cardstock you're not going to be able to hide the seams with the light colored cardstock you're going to see the seam it's going to be very very noticeable um one of the things that i would probably do is to create a deliberate seam and what i mean by that is i would do a deliberate seam right here to separate out this leg um, similar to the way this foot is separated and how the face is separated from the neck so while it may seem like and also actually how this leg is separated from the rest of the body so when you make it a deliberate seam uh, there's going to be the the border right here so there's not going to be a seam because it's actually we're making it a separate piece so we're gonna call the leg a separate piece and that will give us just a little bit of room right from here to here and hopefully that gives us enough to cut down on maybe from two seams to one seam. Every seam, every little thing that you can do ends up adding up um, to making the whole project as seamless as possible. So you may think, well, what's the difference, this little foot right here, but it all adds up. Um, and I wanna make it where it makes sense. So to me, having this additional foot um, would not be so crazy because we have a foot here and we have a foot here. Um, and then we'll tackle this the rest of it. If we made, if we had just one seam in the body, what I would recommend is this is for a birthday party, kind of like uh, when you're in school and you win first place for the science fair. <laughs> you get a little pendant, right, or a little ribbon. Um, I was thinking we could use that ribbon somewhere right around here to cover a seam, maybe right here, and that would have either the name of the birthday girl or the age so it could be number five uh charlotte whatever so that will help us hide the seams i think everything else will be seamless so it will look wonderful the colors are beautiful so let's get started um we're going to be cutting up and moving things out so what i like to do is i always like to have a copy of this image so i'm going to duplicate it and then i'm going to flatten it so that will always give us a visual of what this looks like. So this one's highlighted and I'm just gonna click flatten. And the reason why I wanna flatten it is so that when I click on, for instance, this hair, I'm gonna know it's only for this one because this one is a print and cut image and this is what it ends up looking like. It's one line item so that I know which one I'm dealing with. So this one I'm gonna make smaller and I'm just gonna have it up in the corner so I know what it looks like. Okay. Um, the next thing that I would do is let's look at this file. The, what I noticed right away is there's an outline, but it's not a solid background, right? Because you can see the little white, it's almost like it's tracing the, um, all the purple pieces of the unicorn. So what I would want to do is I do recommend having a solid background because that way all your layers are going to sit on top it's easier to glue down and um, it's easier to move the file around um i don't know it's a best practice that's all i'm going to say <laughs> so what you want to do is when you select this one you want to go to contour and in contour we're just going to click hide all and it will give us a solid i'm so used to seeing a solid black background but in this case it looks like we're going to use a purple so i'm going to hide all and it's just going to give us one big unicorn okay don't worry about it being at the front we can easily select this i think okay 
I think we have to ungroup it first. So I'm gonna ungroup it and then select that purple background and send it to the back. And then everything will appear the way it um, should. So let's go to arrange and send, oop, not send to the front. It is at the front, um, send to the back. Okay, so our unicorn is back. Um, the next thing that I would want to do is let's go to right now we're in the tab for layers on the right hand side panel. Let's go to color sync. Let's see how many colors are involved in this file, this image. Um, I see the first thing that jumps out to me, um, three pink shades. I normally like to deal with two because three is just one too many. <laughs> That's as simple as that. It looks like this pale pink is the cheek, the ear, and the belly. So I agree that this can be a different pink, but I kind of have an issue with dark pink and light pink. So this is totally up to you. It really doesn't matter. It, it depends on whether or not you want to bring in an, addi an additional color. I personally don't. If you like it, you just leave it. Um, I'm going to make it two pinks. So I'm gonna grab one of these pinks down here and drop it up to the lighter pink. So um, I'm gonna have just two shades of pink. It's gonna be the pink that's on the actual like body or body parts, facial parts, and the rest is gonna be hair. So there are all my pinks. I don't think it changes my image. I'm okay with that. So you can see the difference between the two. Um, the next thing that I see, um, we have two shades of blue, so you can continue to go with that or not. If you don't want to, I would, you know, just move the blues down. And then there's two shades of green, so totally up to you again. Um, and then the purple is our background, but also it looks like that's our little nostril and our eyebrow, or uh, not eyebrow, eyelash. Um, normally, I would just have it come through the white piece. Because see, here's our, our background is going to be this purple, right? And you can see in the eyes that there's a, a little cutout for the eyelash. So the purple would come through from the back. But if you wanted to um, add another layer, like put foam tape or something to make it pop out a little bit, which I would recommend, then I would keep it separate up here like this. I think we're good here. I just wanted to touch on that. Let's go back to layers. I did notice a little bit a little speck so let me see once this pops up i would just delete it i'm not into cutting super small pieces and i'll show you what i mean i thought i saw it somewhere up here here this little guy right here it's like a dot i'm just gonna delete it okay now here is the eyebrow and the nose i actually would want to make these two a different purple maybe using purple glitter cardstock. So I'm actually gonna grab these two items and change it so that it's a different purple than my background. Okay, all right, so now we have all our pieces. Let's see if this guy, oops, did I already make it 30 inches? I don't think I did. So let's grab the unicorn. Let's go to width. The width is longer than the height. So I always pick whichever one is longer and change that to 30 inches. So in this case, I'm gonna to go to the width and change it to 30. And it's a longer image this way, so it'll be 30 inches this way. It'll be a sizable piece, great to take pictures next to. Now, this is now really big. I'm gonna go down here to the bottom left <laughs> and reduce this to 25% so that I'm not scrolling up and down to look at this image. I believe that the only issue that we have will be our purple background because that's going to be 30 inches wide. So we're going to need to slice that up into pieces that the Cricut can cut. And I think our only other issue is going to be the white. So let's look at these things and see. And you'll know because when we're scrolling down over here on the side, it gives us a warning sign like it does on this piece. This piece is 14, 15 inches almost by 17 inches. So it's big. Um, and I believe that's it. Everything else should cut on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. All right, so let me see. I feel like we might not even need to separate this. If we cut this right around here, 
or here. I think that the two pieces, we don't care about the seam because we're gonna put that pendant on top. So let's go to images and let's search for pendant and see if I get anything good that I want to use. Um, where is my pendant? It says we have a lot of results, but I'm not seeing them. What is going on with design space today? Okay, so that's not what I'm looking for. Maybe banner. I'm looking for like a round little piece. Let me see what we have here. I've used one before. Um, and I can't remember what I've called it in the past. I'm not seeing anything here. All right. Oh, starting to something like this. I'm going to click on rosette and see if anything there. So as you can see, this is, oh, this is exactly what I'm looking for. Things like this. So these you end up folding up like an accordion, like a fan. And then, so you have like little ridges. I think this is going to be really, really cute. Something like that. Oh, here. I think this is going to be a good one. This one. Oh, look how pretty that one is. Oh, you can't see it. Hold on. Let me move my face. I think this one's really pretty. I don't know what it is. I've never used it before. <laughs> um, but for simplicity's sake, I'm going to use this one because it looks like I can easily put a number right here. This folds up. Oh, and I purchased it. All right, maybe I won't use that one because I don't want it to be something that's purchased. I want you guys to be able to use it as well. So let's click on this one. Let me undo this one. Let's add to canvas. I can always delete it on the canvas. Okay. Oh my goodness, come on. Move over. <laughs> I don't want to move my purple thing yet. My Okay, so let me undo this for a second. Design space is super slow today. So I apologize. It did not. It's killing me. Okay, let me see if I can move this. Okay. So both are very similar. You're basically gonna be folding up each one of these and then gluing it together and it's gonna give you one big round one. Um, and I used to have it, let me go check really quickly if I have one right here to show you. Oh, I do have it. Okay, so let me show you really quickly. Sort of. So you see how it's like a fan? You're basically gonna be gluing these two pieces together. So it's gonna give you like one of those accordion fans. And then you would add more so that you end up having a full circle. So it's gonna look like this. And then you glue these two together and then see how pretty that is so you can put something like this and then with the number in the middle so the way I would size this is like this if you remember the middle piece and then the rosette is going to be around it so let's see how big this is this is way too big 
that that would be more than enough to cover the seam because that's the middle piece, right? So we can look at this and see how big. How big is this piece? Okay, so it's four inches by three inches. So it's pretty big. Um, we can make this a little bit smaller. And I think that would be good. Okay. So this is what it would look like over here. It's going to be a little bit bigger and it can have the number or the name. Okay. So I'm going to delete this one. These are both basically the same kind of idea. Okay. So this will just put on the side over here. Um, all right, now we can deal with this. So this we need to basically slice. This is long. Okay, let's see what we can do with this. Um, we're gonna slice this in half. And oh my, oh my. I wanna get the square over. Okay, make it really big. And let's see, this is 16 inches. All right, let's slice this somewhere right around. Do you see I'm kind of slicing off this side from this side? Let's see if this works, okay? So I'm gonna grab these two items and slice. Let's see what we have. We may have to tweak this a little bit. And I probably should have made a duplicate copy before I did it. All right, so this piece we can remove like this. This piece, I'm gonna duplicate it. I'll move it to the side for a minute. So this piece right here, I'm gonna duplicate this as well. So I have a copy of both, just in case we need it. Okay, so on this one, what I would do is, we want it right up next to each other. You know what? I shouldn't have done that. Hold on, let me delete this. Let's make a copy of this, because we want them right next to each other. So Control C, Control V, okay? And then here's our copy. All right, on this one, I want to get rid of, let me think about this. Let's go to contour and see what we have. I want that little piece. Okay, I don't want this little piece. This little piece is nothing. Okay, so I'm getting rid of that one. On this one, what I want is, I'm gonna go to contour. And basically, I want this piece and I don't want this piece. And I'm gonna show you why. Wait, hold on, I want the opposite. What am I doing? I want this piece, but I don't want this one. There we go. You see, because I want to reattach this. The image was so close together that I couldn't slice it cleanly. So by slicing it in half, sort of, I cut off this piece that I would want attached to this one. So that's why uh, from this one, I got rid of the big piece. I want to keep this one exactly where it is so that I can go and weld it, make it whole again. So now this piece, let's see how big it is. Oh my gosh, and it didn't, it didn't weld together for some reason. We can fix that in a bit. That's a glitch because it should have. We didn't do anything to that piece. All right, so now on this side, we can just get rid of this, right? And we can, on this one, we don't need that little piece in there. because it's attached to this piece. So this piece is 11.7 by 9.8. We can cut that with a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. So we're good there. This piece is 6.7 by 14.58, but I believe if we go and we rotate this, and when you unlock it, it'll give us new dimensions. Oh, we're so close. Here's 11.5 by 12.182. It's going to be a little bit long and could cut off. But let's look at this little guy, what our piece looks like. 
Is it okay if it's slightly cut off somewhere? No, it's not. Wait a minute. It's a little bit... I'm so bummed because we're so close. It's this piece right here, right? So it may cut off a little bit. I would have it cut off here. <laughs> or you can go and re-slice it just a little bit and move it over a little bit. Those are some options. Um, but if you're okay, what will happen is this part will be cut off a little bit, which I think is fine. You could do this hair and move it up a little bit um, and it could cover that piece. All right, so that's our white. Everything else should be yeah, everything else is of the right size because look at this piece is pretty big, but even this piece, right? These are all great pieces now. All right. Um, the only thing that I would add is here, whatever number you want to do, pick your text, make sure that the number kind of fits in this little box or a little bit bigger. And I'm going to show you an example because I would recommend doing an offset just so that the number pops out. So let's just do a five for instance. And where's my five? Here's my five. Ah. Um, my five, sometimes when it gets stuck in the corner, what I would do is select it over here and then in position, I would change it to five and five. So it'll move it closer to where my mouse can pick it up. I would do something like this. It can be bigger than the sign. It's going to pop out. So I um, would recommend going to offset and doing a little bit of an offset. Personally, I like a thinner offset. So I usually change this from a quarter of an inch to 0 0.10 and hit your tab key and you can see a little offset. I'm going to click apply and I would make this five of similar colors to what you have on here. So maybe my outline, wait, this is my outline. No, this is my outline. I would make that white. Oh no, that's my, oh, that's the ink. Sorry, I'm gonna change this to white. And this I'm gonna change to my favorite color within the unicorn. That's up to you up here. But I might change this to the purple that matches the eye, the eyelash and the nose, the nostril. And then I would change the color of this to be whatever color that matches more. Um, I like having, let me see. Let's change this to white and this to the dark purple to match the outline. And that will make these colors pop a lot. Um, actually, no, then now I would change the opposite of this because I don't want white on white. So we're gonna switch it. And this I'll change to white. This is totally up to you, okay. And then this will be whatever color you want it to be, whatever color paper. So I would change this to, let's say you did want to do the same purple. You could do that and change all the colors to purple. All right, the only thing left that we have is the purple background, right? That needs to be sliced up. So I'm going to move this down to where it's cleaner. And Right now it's 30 inches by 24 inches. It's too big, you can't cut it on your Cricut, so we need to slice it up into pieces that the Cricut can cut. I have an SVG file, and I'm just gonna talk about it a little bit so that I can explain why it's why it's a good why it's a good purchase. It's available on my website, which is um, www.theuselesscrafter.com. And I created this I call it the grid of squares. So I'm going to go to upload while I'm finding it. I'm going to talk about why it's important. You can recreate it. I have a bazillion videos showing you how to create it using the 
um, position feature, the X coordinate and the Y coordinate. I lose a lot of people there. That's why I created this SVG file. The grid of squares are nine squares that are completely flushed with each other. So that means they're not overlapping and there aren't any gaps, which means one, when you piece it all together, all the corners butt up to each other, it makes it very easy to piece it back together. The second thing is because they butt up next to each other, we're really um, basically trying to make it seamless. There is a seam, we had to cut it because we can't cut it on the Cricut otherwise. But when, it, when we allow for it to just butt up next to each other, then the seams will be as flushed as possible as we put them back together. That helps us tape it and then all the colors go on top. So we're hiding all the seams. When you do an off the map project, the whole idea is to make something really big but seamless right because if it's full of seams then it's not as impressive so if we make it seamless then it just looks amazing right how did you make something so big uh with 12 by 12 paper right um, and some people don't even know 12 by 12 paper exists. So your average person that comes over to your party is thinking that we're using eight and a half by 11 paper, probably. Um, so um, it's just really amazing to say I made it. It looks amazing and it's a great photo prop and it looks just like the character that you wanted. So um, like I said, every every part of the off the map project for me um, is to make something really big, really seamless and beautiful. And so every little thing that we can do, like having the little ribbon with the with the age um, on it, is covering a seam so that it looks flawless. Everywhere that we can't cover up like that, we want to employ the other techniques that we know. Using the grid of squares, using glitter cardstock when we can, when, when there is a seam. Uh, we didn't do it on this project, but we were thinking about it. Oh, and the grid of squares come in both sizes. So when you purchase it, you, you get both the nine and the 16. All right, I'm gonna add it to the canvas. Um, we didn't employ it, but we could have, which was making the foot another piece with a deliberate seam, right? So these are all the tricks and tips and tricks that we have up our sleeve. When you purchase and download the SVG file, when you go to upload it, it's gonna come in group together and you want it to come in group together um, but what you need to do is you do need to go to your position feature and I would just round this up to whole numbers probably in this case it won't even matter but the nice thing about having it on whole numbers is if you have to adjust anything or undo and you know retrace your steps it's a lot easier when all the squares are going to be on a whole number instead of like two point one nine eight right it's so hard to get it to that particular spot again so it's much easier if everything's on um on the grid on a whole number all right so we've got that we can ungroup it and then what we can do is we can scroll down to get our purple our purple background Where are you? Are you all the way at the bottom? I think the purple background is all the way at the bottom. We're gonna select it and arrange send to the front. The reason why we wanna do that, we wanna make sure that where we're slicing it makes sense. Sometimes there's nothing that we can do about it. But this is, this is something that I wouldn't wanna do right here. Um, like that because you see this little curl right here, this little tip would be sliced off. So I want when I'm slicing this to have as big of pieces as I can so that it's easy to manage it, right? I don't wanna be holding on to a small little triangle and trying to tape it back together. So in that case, I want to move this over. Now that's gonna give me this, which I don't like. So I'm gonna move this down, see if I can deal with that. Um, this is better, but then you still have this little sliced off piece. What you can do is you could do something like this. You can twist it around and see what works best. This little guy is going to be difficult. No matter how we slice him, 
he's got little things hanging out. But at least now none of the pieces are gonna be so small that we can't handle. We can put him back and see if there's anything that we can do here. Let me think, 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 think. What can we do? Not that much. I feel like, yeah, he's a difficult piece. Um, so I think I would wanna go back to something like this. And let's see what we have here. We've got, This is really tough. Okay, I know. So again, remember at the beginning when I said I really wanted everything to be on a grid? So here's why. You see how this little thing is coming off? But over here, I have all this empty space. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to get rid of this square. I'm gonna grab this square and this square. And see, I know it's on 16, so I can move these two over like this. And look, now it's gonna cut here. It's gonna be two pieces. Um, I can do that for this as well. I can move everything over a little bit. I'm not gonna mess with that, let me see. This is gonna be cut off. Okay, so let's slice off this and this for now. Okay, I'm gonna slice it and we'll move it over. So you can kind of see we're really making adjustments. You don't have to make, it doesn't have to be perfect here, um, but I'm doing it the best way, okay? So in as few pieces as possible. Now I'm not sl slicing off this purple part and the square. When you're slicing, you can only slice two things at one time. So it's always the image with one square at a time, okay? So I'm gonna move these two out of the way and I'm gonna reassemble it over here so that we know what we have. So see these two line up. Later on when we put this back together, we know it's just right there. I'm gonna get rid of the excess here, okay? So now what we can do is I'm gonna arrange and send this to the back for a second. Let me see, you know what? We can slice off this bottom part. So let's slice off this. That way we can work, we can move the squares up here in the middle in a bit. So let's grab this and slice it off. You know, I made this part difficult because everything else was so easy already. <laughs> so if the first part was difficult, I would have just done this the easy way. But this is, I'm maximizing the paper and making it easy for us. It's just a lot, a few more steps over here. So I'm gonna move all this over. This is the bottom part, right? This we can get rid of. Okay. So I am gonna move, see how we have a little bit of space here? I'm gonna move this arrange, send to the back. And I'm gonna move this, this, and actually, yes. I'm gonna move it over a little bit. And let's see what we have. I'm gonna arrange, Send to the back, okay. So now this piece is its own, it's connected here. Oh, but this piece down here, see, that's why. All right, let me see what I can do here. We don't want that little piece. There, that's gonna be a, a better piece to manage right there. Okay, I'm gonna slice this. and slice this and then we're done okay so here is our bottom piece of the unicorn let's put this piece back like this right
So all, you know, relatively big pieces that we can manage. This, delete, save it, and that's it. Let's go to make it and see what we have. Oh, what's not compatible? Did I not ungroup this yet? Is this uncap? Incompatible. Did I say incompatible? Oh, we still have this print and cut. I'm going to delete this. I think that's what it was. Okay, let's go to make it. You want to change the color of your rosette to all the same color so that your fan is all one color. I know we didn't do that, but that was minor. I didn't know what color you wanted to do, but that's what I would do. Okay, let's see what we have here. So on this white, remember we were going to do this. You're going to rearrange this. This was going to fit. Okay, let's move everything else out of the way. I like using my 12 by 24 mats. And in this case, I wouldn't necessarily use, you know, obviously if we were going to use 12 by 24 cardstock, it'd be a different story. But, um, I like using my 12 by 12, 12 by 24 mat because I would just put two 12 by 12 pieces of cardstock on and have it cut and call it a day. So you can see we're moving this up. We're getting very close to the 12 inch line. Um, what I would do in this case is I would put my paper all the way down to 12 and a half and it would cut off this little tip here like we talked about, okay? Everything else should cut fine. Make sure that nothing, when you're moving things, that nothing is overlapping so that it doesn't cut incorrectly for you. Wow, oh my God, it won't highlight this piece to move it. It's just glitchy right now. Let's look at this piece. Okay, so this piece, I would rotate it. And this piece will now be under 12 inches and will cut perfectly. Here's your rosette. It's gonna cut and score for you. And that's gonna be a lot of fun to put together. It's super cute. All right, here are all our pieces. They're all good. Um, the only other thing is maybe in this purple part, yeah, these can definitely be moved. Um, like I would move this one click on the three dots, you can change it to a different mat. So I'm gonna move object to save space because this is all by itself, when in fact, it could fit with another purple piece. So it could probably easily fit, well not easily, watch it not fit. <laughs> I'm gonna click on this one and confirm to move it over to that mat. And let's see what we have here. Yep, saving one cut. Um, you could probably do that on a few more pieces, but anyway. Um, here's another piece that you can move over. Look, one pink piece by itself. Let's click on the three dots, move object. I'm sure there's space up in sheet 18. Right here. You just will just need to move the stuff around, right? Like... this. Oh, easy peasy. You can make this more efficient. And then that way you can save the scraps. It's more worth, worth saving scraps. <laughs> All right, that's it. Any comments, questions, please post them below or special requests like the person who needed this one. And I'd be more than happy to help you out. All right, bye guys.